Yeah. And I'm Mike McMahon. I'm the co-creator of Slayer Opposites and the co-showrunner with Josh Bicell, uh, one of the writers and uh, one of the showrunners with Mr. McMahon. And our EP, Danielle Ularic, writer. And then we said Joe. We introduced him first. I'm Joe. Producer writer. Yeah. Well, I guess my first question would be, uh, especially when it comes to writing, it seems like a lot of the uh, shows that Royland has, they have very simple plots that have a lot of subtext. How, how does that come about? You know, Justin's art style is where it all springs from. Like, he really speaks through his art, because there are few people in this world that can sit down and draw something that makes you laugh. You know what I mean? Yes. And that's, that's our first thing, is we're like, his art style makes us laugh, but then it's our job to build this com- unexpected complexity, these unexpected jokes. To us, an audience that knows what's coming is an audience that changes the channel, or the app, or whatever it is. An audience that has to rewatch to catch everything and they never know what's coming, but there's still heart, there's still emotional storytelling, there's a lot of jokes, mm-hmm. those are the people that are going to stick with it. So Justin's bringing the funny, he's bringing the tone. I worked with him for like six years on Rick and Morty, so like we knew what we could accomplish, and Solar was our chance to do a totally ridiculous no rules show that's constantly seeing what we can get away with with the format of television. And they keep letting us get away with it. They really do. They need to stop us. Disney and Hulu have been very good. But I mean, really, we write, we talk about, like, we write, this show is is joyful, right? It's a joy to write, and we hopefully it's a joy to watch, and it comes across on the screen, and I think that's where you yeah. get all the fun of having a subplot like what we have in the wall, and now we have a subplot, Silver Cops, to go along with our aliens. We're just trying to have as much fun as we can, honestly. We want to get Justin's goofiness and then mix it with depth that you don't expect, and then the second you get the depth, it gets right back to goofy. You know, like you just yeah. never get your foot out. Yeah. So what else can I ask? I don't want to. Well, I was going <laughs> to ask something right now. Um, so for in comparison to like cable and broadcast and what Rick and Morty's been on for ever, yeah. and Hulu. I mean, how how much different is it? Because it seems like you're able to do as m- a lot more via Hulu than yeah. you would on broadcast TV. Well, we like the first thing is that knowing that domestically we can we can binge that we're going to mm-hmm. drop all at once, or that for internationally, if you log in to watch an episode of Solar, you have the whole run up till mm-hmm. whatever you have. Which even on Rick and Morty, you had to hope that somebody had happened to see an episode to understand mm-hmm. what was going to happen next. Mm-hmm. So because we're not on linear, as they call it, we know that we can write these bizarrely serialized stories mixed in with the kind of flighty, fun, Simpsons-esque, episodic family stories. But also, we're all such fans of TV mm-hmm. that like we like writing family stories, and we never get hired to write the heavy dramatic stories. Mm-hmm. So we're doing the stuff we know that we love, and then we're switching and putting on our hats of doing things that nobody would ever let us write a dramatic story like The Wall. So we're like, ah, fuck it, let's just do it in our own show, and then we love getting to do it. But we also get to be very dirty, and we get to cuss, yeah. which is great. <laughs> coming from regular TV where we didn't get to do that for so long. Yeah. That is a big perk. We're just trying to find rules to break at this point because yeah. Hulu supports us and Disney supports us unless we're making fun of Bambi or Mickey Mouse or whatever. But then that's the only time they ever fight back is they're like, no, you can't say that Winnie the Pooh has a vibrator collection. You know what I mean? But other than that, they're fine with it. So, so is that the rule to break? Oh, sorry. Oh, yes. Is that the rule to break? Is like you have to go to Disney route and once well, you get to them, then you... We slip in a Disney thing every once in a while. We're like, we know they they know they own this. Marvel, right? Marvel and Star Wars are... Uh... They won't let us mess with Marvel. Well, we've messed a little with Marvel. Star Wars is a pretty big no-no. But it's weird because like, we're making fun of everything we love. And we love all that stuff. Disney owns everything we love. So like, we just have to find that line. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there was a subplot like in the first season because uh, my girlfriend introduced me to Solar Opposites. Aww. So I was like, let me watch this. First two seasons, that whole subplot of the people inside the tank, <laughs> yeah. it blew my mind that there was a continuing narrative. Because <laughs> normally most shows would be like, okay, that's just a one-off. We're not going to care. Yeah. Y'all took the time out from season one all the way through season two to do that. Like, how hard was that to craft that series? You know and it's a very serious narrative, season too. Season three is even bigger, and season like, four is even bigger. Like, how did y'all go about crafting that serious narrative, and then you balance that with what's happening outside the tank with all the goofy stuff that's happening there? The, you know, well, let me, you talk. Okay, so we got a little greedy with the drama writing. Originally, it was just supposed to be one season, and then we were going to switch to another plot. Yeah. But um, we loved doing this kind of, like, Game of Thrones kind of... Uh, you know, it's, it's escape kind of uh, narrative in the first season that we 
we switched it up and did like a little bit more of like a murder mystery. True detective. Yeah. True detective in the second season. <laughs> and then in the third season, we were like, well, we really would love to write like a monster movie, a horror movie. So it's like we, we get greedy with like the dramas that Corman we love. Like, yeah. And then in the fourth season, which which we've written and we're, we're producing right now, is a Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy and very Cold War. Yeah. So we get to write all the drama that nobody pays us to write. Look at Sean Jambroni's like, wait, we're allowed to say that? Yeah. And we're also, we also get to, you know, we have, we get to like, because these guys are normal cast. They are so good and so quick and so sharp and so fast. That then we will cast like these drama actors, yeah. right? That are that, you know the, the Sterling K. Browns and the Christina Hendricks and the Alpha Molinas who are so different, and we we get to have them say ridiculously stupid things. And you know what? It's actually I think the drama stuff is easier because none of us have ever gotten to write any of that in our careers, but we love watching and consuming and reading and like like I love comics and sci-fi books and and like mm. so we for the first time ever get to write our dramas. And then when we swap over to the alien stuff, it's like, okay, it has to be funny. Mm -hmm. Season three had to have more heart than ever before. That's the stuff that's even harder to write because when we switch over to the drama side, it's like, oh, we just get to like cosplay as serious writers for a day and have a blast. <laughs> and then we like story break three seasons out. So we have all of these kind of ideas that are just like waiting to go off. And we're like, wow, drama writing's easy. <laughs> in, a, in a comedy, you have to end a scene on a joke. In yeah. a drama, you, have, you can end a scene on somebody just looking feeling at something. Yeah. It's so funny. Somebody being like, <gasps> and like it's so easy. Yeah. I have this wild feeling that like in season five, all of a sudden it's going to be, yeah, we're going to build Main Street USA right down near the castle. In the yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. Next question is the last one. <laughs> okay, thank you. I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit, what does it mean to you, the Comic Con? Why is it important oh. for you? And uh, Well, I mean, I can say for me, I've been coming to Comic Con since like 2006, and for the first five times I came, I was a fan on the floor. Like, I had nothing, I had no backstage access. I would like shriek when I saw George R. R. Martin. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. and it was like before Game of Thrones was made into a TV show. Like, I was a full-fledged geeky guy, and getting to be on this side of it, like, I know how special it is for fans to get to like actually see people talking about the stuff we do all day. We talk about making the show all day, but like, when you have this thing you love, getting to share it with people and be around all these people that like everything else you like, because I love comics, you know? Mm. I love movies. I love all the new shows. I want to see the next season of Invincible, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just so, like, part of it is I'm like, yeah, I'm here for work to, like, celebrate this thing that we've all worked on. But then I'm also like, oh, shit, there's all such awesome stuff down here, and I have my favorite bars I've been going to for, like, a decade. So, like, you know, we premiered in the pandemic, when mm -hmm. in lockdown. We came to Comic Con before the show was even off. Mm -hmm. So we haven't, this is our first time being amongst fans and being. You saying your girlfriend introduced you to the show, that's one of the first times I've ever, I've never heard somebody say that. Yeah, like, yeah, like when I first met her, it was like a month after us going out on a date. She was like, hey, you ever seen Solar Opposites? I was like, what is that? <laughs> and, and I was like, what is that? Like, we've all been showing inside this whole time, but like being here with you guys and getting here to somebody say that, I'm like, oh, this work that we've been doing for so long. Somebody's cool girlfriend <laughs> saw it first. Like that's cool yeah. for us, and like having that human connection is super important. Because we have fun writing, and we we like the jokes, but like we want to ultimately like show it off. We want to hear. We are feedback. so happy. I mean, the international thing for us is huge too. Like right? mm -hmm. we didn't really have that the first season or two, and now knowing that when it dropped last week, it dropped I think in a hundred countries. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. that's insane More. and amazing. Mm -hmm. Plus, they don't print out these cool little posters for us if we don't come to Comic Con. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much.